Thank you, Pastor Jason Biasi. His congregants already know that he is a brilliant scholar, a man of faith. I want my congregants to know that he is a mensch through and through, and he is my new friend. And I also wish to thank Pastor Maria Ling for joining in this evening of fellowship, for saying yes when called, and for bringing representatives of her congregation. She is another new friend. Yes. And I wish to thank everyone for showing up tonight. It's no small thing to show up. It would have been easier to stay home on cozy couches and to retreat from the world for a little while wherever Netflix might take you. But here we are. Because you believe that something important is happening in our world now. Because you know that something frightening is happening to our world right now. And you believe that you need to look it in the eye to try to name it, to bear witness to it, and then to look to your right and your left, in front of you, behind you, and find the trustworthy partners who can join you in clarifying what it is to be a human being now, and what being human demands of us now. It takes courage to show up and to be counted. So I am grateful for you. In this sanctuary, I find sanctuary tonight in your presence, and I thank God for you. Perhaps you will join me and many of your neighbors on Parliament Hill on December 4th for the sake of Israel, for the sake of the hostages, for the sake of the safety of Jewish Canadians, for the sake of peace. Most of you do not know me, so let me share just one piece of my biography. When a mosque in Quebec City was attacked in 2017 and six worshipers were gunned down in the midst of their prayers, I called my friend at a local mosque and I asked for permission to create a ring of peace, a human chain around their house of worship while they prayed safely inside. And that idea grew. I called on my rabbinic friends so that seven Toronto mosques were simultaneously, symbolically protected by seven rings of peace that day. My congregation has sponsored many Muslim newcomers to Canada with enthusiasm, with kindness, and lasting commitment. In recent weeks, I have met with imams and other local Muslim leaders for hard conversations and for hard listening. This is part of who I am, part of what I believe in as a rabbi, as a Canadian, as a mother, as a human being with an open heart and an open mind. And I want you also to know that at Holy Blossom Temple we pray every day. We expand our prayers because we can always be expansive in our prayers. And we pray for any and all innocents in Gaza. Since October 7th, when people ask me how I am, I don't know how to answer. Until I recently came across a little Hebrew poem by Chaim Guri, who was among the founding generations of Israel's poets and journalists. He himself fought in the War of Independence. I'll share just one line from his poem. How are you, they ask me in the street. People of all kinds ask, how are you? And I answer, I am as my people are. That's my answer. I believe this is the answer of Jewish people everywhere. So how are my people? My people are grieving. My people are afraid. My people are brave. My people are misunderstood. My people are loving. My people are loyal. My people are lonely. 
My people are united. My people are weary. And my people are confused because so much of what we believe to be true about the world and our place in it seem to be no longer true. As someone who grew up in the shadow of the Holocaust, as the granddaughter of a man who fled his home in Germany only to return as a rabbinic army chaplain with the American armed forces to liberate the Buchenwald concentration camp, I rejected the thought that Jews were still so hated. I believed humanity had learned its lesson the hard way, that when Jews are at risk, the world is at risk. And yet here we are. Last week, the Toronto Jewish High School received a bomb threat and was evacuated, including many of my young congregants. The week before that, two Jewish schools in Montreal found bullets in their front doors. And as I speak, as we gather at this very moment, 39 Jewish children are shaking in dark tunnels under Gaza without a moment of care from the International Red Cross. This story is playing out in the streets and schools of this great city. The hatred is raging here across social media lines and university campuses across this good country, God help us. And so we have to ask ourselves, what kind of city must Toronto become? What kind of country must Canada yet become? Who will put a lid on hatred and say loudly and clearly, not here? I leave for Jerusalem in the very early hours next Monday to volunteer for just a few days to comfort the mourning, to visit the wounded, to console the families of the abducted as best I can. And I will give out as many hugs to my colleagues and friends and family who are there. One of them is Rabbi Tamar Elad Applebaum, a remarkable soul of Moroccan Jewish descent. We first met in the Vatican of all places. Last week from her home in Jerusalem, she addressed more than 900 non-Jewish faith leaders across North America via Zoom. And she said, I know that Jesus would run to tend the kidnapped babies in Gaza. I know that Mohammed would rail against the rapes that Israeli women and girls may never recover from. Rabbi Elad Applebaum teaches that when it comes to Israel and Palestine, it is not either or, it must be both. But when it comes to good and evil, it cannot be both. We must choose what is right and what is good. Allow me to conclude with just one teaching from this week's Torah portion. Every Torah scroll across the planet is now set to the story of Jacob the dreamer. Jacob, whose name will soon become Yisrael, Israel, the one who struggles with God, that is our namesake. Jacob dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set on the ground with its top reaching to heaven, and behold, angels of God ascended and descended upon it. Olim v'yordim bo, ascended and descended upon it, meaning the ladder. That's how it's most often translated. But Rabbi Chia and Rabbi Yanai, about 1,500 years ago, considered with their imagination and a little bit of poetic license, that Bo can mean not upon it, the latter. Bo can mean upon him, upon Jacob. The angels were ascending and descending upon him. But the two rabbis took very different points of view. One said, Jacob was lying on the ground horizontally, and those angels were ascending and descending upon him. 
representing the kingdoms and the forces that would rail against his descendants age after age, pounding. But Rabbi Anai says it will not always be so. I imagine it entirely differently. He said, Jacob was not lying horizontally. He was standing upright with his arms reached toward the very heavens and he was the ladder. He made of himself the ladder upon which the angels ascended and descended. And thereby blessings came from heaven to earth and back again. Through him, through his lifetime, he made sure that heaven and earth were chained one to the other. So on this night, we pray that the world will be blessed with angels ascending. May nations of the world, including our blessed Canada, be guided by governments and advisors ascending to do what is right and just. May people of all faiths ascend in discernment and be courageous enough to speak their truth out loud. And on this night, at this moment of grief and fear, may each of us consider how to make of ourselves a ladder, stretching towards lofty dreams of a lasting peace and sacred purposes, while rooted firmly in the here and now, so that God's promise of blessing may be realized for all of God's children. Amen.